Coalition for Kids want a quality education for students in Charleston County. I sit down one-on-one -on -one with the Executive Director of the organization, Josh Bell, for a special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Listen to this interview later on iHeartRadio and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Josh Bell, it's so good to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Yes. Thanks, thanks for making time. Oh, anytime. Obviously, you are the executive director for the Charleston Coalition for Kids. Right. And I know that you obviously told me just off camera that you've been here in Charleston with your family for six years. And I know that you guys have been heavily involved with education in Charleston County, and particularly here in the school district. This why Josh Bell these days, mm -hmm. the executive director of the Charleston, Charleston Coalition for Kids. Yeah, well, it's probably helpful to tell you where I started. Sure. Yeah, so I'm uh, from South Carolina, from Greenville, went to Clemson University and, uh, and became a, a teacher straight out of college. Was a middle school teacher, taught seventh and eighth grade. And, uh, you know, that really changed the course of my life because, um, you know, the young people I met just are, were phenomenal. And, uh, you know, in, in schools like the ones here in Charleston that, uh, that need more resources, need adults, you know, in the, in the school building that are helping them tap into their potential. And, um, and so, you know, I just fell in love with education and I spent my whole career in public school education. I then led an uh, organization called Teach for America yes. in South Carolina. Um, so, you know, through that, recruited and trained and supported hundreds of teachers in high need South Carolina schools, rural, uh, rural communities throughout the state and, and here in Charleston, which is what brought me here. Um, and then, yeah, just, uh, you know, about a year, year and a half ago, I decided to take on a, a, a new challenge and start the Charleston Coalition for Kids with a, with a, a group of people that want to see change in our public schools. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. Certainly, you talk about public school education. How do you define that in 2019? Hmm. You know, it's a. I mean, here's this is a this is a, an important question because um, I mean, public school education obviously is is an important right. It's something that every every single child um, in this community in our state deserves an excellent public education. And we're a long way from that for many kids, right? It's predictably for kids growing up in poverty, for students of color facing the challenges of racism, uh, and, and, you know, in, in our society. And, uh, and, and yet that's very solvable. But the other part of your question is, in 2019, change is here, right? The economy has changed tremendously. You know, the world that, that students in school right now are, are going to live in, the way that they're going to need to retool to be employable, right, and, and to, to have a life of choice uh, is it's real change. And so public education, I think, you know, from what you and I may be experienced in our lives, needs to look pretty different. Um, it needs to adapt to, you know, to meet kids where they are much more quickly. Um, we need to use technology in really meaningful ways that aren't, you know, just uh, letting kids do test prep on computers, right, but, but meeting kids, differentiating, and uh, you know, different types of, of apprenticeships, you know, internships, co-ops to, to learn job skills, um, and then of course getting young people ready to go to college um, or whatever they, they choose to do after, after high school. So, you know, it's, uh, the, the world has changed and, and our public education system certainly for, for our most marginalized students has not changed fast enough. Um, and that's, that's a real opportunity, I think, here in 2019 going forward. You talk about obviously people of color and students in those particular schools. I know that on the Coalition for Kids website, they basically say 80% of African American third graders in our schools cannot read on grade level. Where are you emotionally with that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, you know, the, the human potential that we have not tapped into is such a, I mean, it's just a travesty. And I mean, set, set aside, you know, what it means for the health of our economy locally or, you know, all these other things that you could measure, right? What education really is, is freedom, right? The ability to, uh, to pursue the life that you want to, the ability to learn and grow and develop and, and try new things. And so when you think about how many young people are in our schools who can't read or do math 
in a way that's going to set them up for you know for the life choice that certainly I want for my own children, that we all want for people we love. It's a travesty, right? And it's um, it's it's got to change. And yet, you know, we could get on an airplane at the Charleston Airport, and you pick a city, pick a number of cities that we could go to and see tremendously different outcomes than what we have here. Certainly within within cities or pockets of schools and cities that are serving students growing up in poverty very differently. That are getting outcomes, you know, that we would all be very proud of here if we had if we had more of it. So, you know, it's it's not just a pipe dream to wish that we were doing better for, for students that we're not serving. This this is solvable. We can do this. And obviously, when you think about obviously schools of color here in Charleston, you think about Burke and obviously Sunny State. Yeah. When you hear about the latest news, where is the Charleston's Coalition for Kids that discussion? Yeah. What's the latest news? Oh, uh, Burke High School. Um, you know, obviously, there's a lot of changes that might go down the pipe down there. What do you see? What do you hope to see for Burke High School when it comes to the Coalition for Kids? Well, the same thing I'd want to see for you know kids in any school. I mean, you know. I take that question and zoom out, right? Okay. What do what do families and students who go to Charleston County Public Schools deserve? It doesn't matter what school it is, right? Whether it's Jane Edwards out on Edisto or Burke High School downtown or Baptist Hill in Hollywood, and you know, and I've worked in a number of these schools okay. over the years and, and supported teachers and leaders in these schools. Um, they need to have outstanding teachers and, and principals. Right, who are uh, empowered to spend the budget that they have to make decisions about curriculum to meet the needs of their kids, of their community, um, and who, you know, quite frankly, I mean, the district and the bureaucracy needs to get out of the way and let those educators lead and let those educators make decisions that are best for their kids. We we test way too much, but we need to keep our eye on a few metrics, right? Are students able to read and do math in a way that's preparing them for the future? You know, our students, once they leave our education system, have tests and milestones that, that the world uses to measure whether they're ready for the military, right, or ready for college, or uh, or able to get a job at Boeing, right? So they, our, our young people have to face tests. Um, so we should be using some measurements to figure out what schools are doing this effectively. Um, and, and if they're not, what, what resources, what additional supports do they need? What, you know, what models are working out there either in our state or, or nationally that we could uh, support these schools or, or, you know, innovate within the school model? Um, but, but look, at the end of the day, like, uh, schools that are, are not serving most of their kids well, something has to change, right? It's not up to me to decide what that change is. It should be with the educators, with parents, with families, with student voice, you know, uh, influencing that, right? But the way things are right now is just not working. And given the way that the world and the economy is changing, it's not going to work going forward either. You talk about the educators and leaders. Obviously, on your website, you read it says this, actually. School board members are responsible for improving the outlook of our schools. Meaningful change is not possible unless we start at the top. Focus on those ultimately responsible for school outcomes. The Charleston County School Board manages $920 million, the largest public budget that is in our region. And most community members have no idea who serves. When you look at the Charleston County School Board now, what do you see? Yeah, and that is a staggering budget, by the way. I mean, you know, almost a billion dollars in, in spending, you know, in total, it's just it's, it's a huge number. Um, and, and again, yeah, the average the average person isn't really aware of that. That does not know who they've uh, who is elected to serve them. Uh, when I look at the board right now, I have uh, I have a lot of optimism. Actually, okay. uh, the work that I do in public education, and I think most educators uh, do it because they believe that you know when you know better, you do better. <laughs> that when uh, when People, whether it's students or teachers or leaders, get support and resources. Uh, they can they can change, they can grow, they can develop. And so I, I see the board now, you know, that seems to be unified around the urgency for change that's needed. That seems to be committed to taking bold actions. Um, and 
And, you know, and I think they need to listen and engage the community in, in really authentic and meaningful ways. I mean, that's a hard thing to do in a county this big. They've got to do that uh, before they before they make any meaningful changes. But, you know, I, I, am, I am optimistic. I mean, I've been watching school board meetings in Charleston County and throughout our state for a long time. And there have been moments where the dysfunction is really disheartening, um, where, you know, the board is not serving its purpose, it's not working together, it's certainly not focused on outcomes for, for, for students. Um, there seems to be an evolution that gives me some hope right now. When you look back, obviously, to the election time to now, and I know you guys endorse some of those candidates, what still plays in your mind? Yeah. Well, you know, in the, in the election, I think what, what plays in my mind is that um, the community seem to focus on the, the importance of the school board election, which, you know, doesn't matter who you support it. That's a really important thing. This is one of the most impactful and important votes that anyone has when they step into the ballot box. And so uh, attention on the race is fantastic. You know, what, what I will say is that um, I, I think about, you know, I'm not thinking about the 2020 election. I'm thinking about the class of 2020. I'm thinking about young people who are in school right now who, you know, many of them are not getting what they deserve. They're not getting the academic you know, skill set. Uh, you know, the rigor is not there to get them ready for, for the future. And, um, and, and that has to change. And so I think that this board, you know, while I'm, while I'm optimistic, I think that they need to focus on several really important goals uh, to keep an eye on and put those at the top of every agenda. How are our kids doing? And, uh, you know, you've been in these board meetings too often. That's just not what's being discussed and debated. And so uh, that, that's my hope going forward, that we see more and more of that, and that this board is working cohesively to tackle the hard problems that exist uh, and not, you know, and not divisively, uh, you know, around problems that, that um, aren't impacting students directly. Obviously, one of your supporters was just recently appointed to the board, and that is Chris Frazier. When you think of Chris Frazier, what do you hope he will do in the school board? Well, the same thing I hope that any school board member does, right? Uh, uh, you know, focus on outcomes that matter for, for students. Okay. Um, focus on the role of the board, which is, you know, to hold a really high bar, an uncomfortably high bar, I think, for the district to improve to hit goals, uh, to, to meet the needs of students and be honest about where they're falling short of doing that. Um, and so, yeah, whether, I mean, you know, Chris Frazier, there were eight fantastic people that threw their name into consideration for that vacancy and the legislative delegation had a really hard decision. Um, but I hope the same thing for Chris Frazier as I do for anybody who's on the school board, that they, that they are urgent about the improvements that need to happen that they ask hard questions, you know, about this you know, 900 something million dollar budget that they're going to pass, um, and that they push those resources to places that need them most, that they are equitable about the way that they invest, um, and that they take on new, you know, new things like, you know, empowering educators to make more decisions or expanding programs that are working to, to provide more seats to families that want them or, uh, you know, more high quality. Uh, early childhood education. These are all things that ultimately the board is responsible for doing, and it won't get done if they don't, right? So they've got a really unique, important uh, job to do. And obviously, when you look at the Charleston County School Board, most of your uh, you know, candidates are on there. Joyce Green, Kate Darby, Cindy Bonacos, and of course, Eric Mack. When you look back at that election, how do you get to those four people? Yeah, so we, we um, invited all, there were 11 candidates. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we invited all of them, uh, you know, sent them uh, a questionnaire, an opportunity to, to you know, engage in our, in our candidate process. Um, eight chose two. So it was, uh, it was those four that we endorsed, uh, as well as Linda Mosley Lucas, right. uh, uh, Sarah Shad Johnson, right. Jake Rambo, and Paul Padron. Uh, you know, and uh, our interview committees not only, you know, reviewed all their responses, but spent time, you know, interviewing each one of them. and. Um, Again, some phenomenal folks, right? These were not easy choices. Um, but, uh, you know, so I look back at that as, you know, 
as a voter, you got to make a decision. Our interview committee engaged with all the folks and recommended it to the voters who we thought the right candidates were. And uh, you know, and not only did uh, did we come to that conclusion, the Post and Courier's editorial board and the Chamber of Commerce and others, you know, came to the same conclusions. I think Charleston City Paper endorsed three of the four. So you know, a lot of people um, came away with the, the same same uh, candidates that we did. But look, at the end of the day, whether all four won or all four lost. The change that's needed is, is what's really important, right? The opportunity to improve schools uh, with our communities um, and to make sure that students have the opportunities that they deserve, that's what matters. Uh, it doesn't really matter who is elected to the school board. Um, so that's where we're putting our attention now. You talk about attention and goals. What is the goal for the Coalition for Kids now that these four people are on the school board? Yeah. Well, a, a big part of it is shining the light on um, what what the board is doing? Right, people are busy. <laughs> Teachers, you know, are are uh, underpaid. You know, many of them working multiple jobs to make ends meet. They don't have time, um, and, and it, that should not be the case. By the way, we ought to be paying teachers much more. Uh, you know, for the for the unbelievable work they do. Uh, they don't have time to go to all the school board meetings. They, have, you know, people are busy, and I, and I sit in all these meetings, right? Um, so part of the responsibility is just. Putting out updates and information about what's going on. But going forward, you know, there are some really clear issues that um, that this board needs to focus on, and so we're gonna, you know, hold them accountable to, to making progress on those things, right? And it's and it's things like, you know, making sure that we've got, you know, outstanding principals and outstanding teachers in the schools that need the most. Uh, you know, and making sure that uh, there are. You know, and there is empowerment to those educators about what they decide to do with their resources. Uh, you know, the central office should not be making all the decisions, and 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 educators close to students really know more than anybody, and they need to be trusted, and we need to invest in them. Uh, you know, to to make sure that students' needs are being met. So it's, you know, again, this is hard work. Uh, I've done it as a teacher. It's really hard work. It's some of the most important work. In a society, um, but we don't have to overcomplicate it, right? We can measure where we're making progress. The board can allocate resources differently, and we can see how we're doing. We can look at ACT scores. We can look at reading and math proficiency, and, and see how are we doing? How can we do better? How do we invest in the things that are working and change what's not? Would magnet schools or charter schools work for Charleston County of Mar? Well, they're here, right? I mean, this is this is what's interesting is that um, you know there was just a report in the Post and Courier, uh, something like fourteen or fifteen percent of families in this district uh, have applied to go to a different school than the one they're done for. Um, so clearly, parents and families and students expect some some degree of choice, um, and you know. The Charleston Coalition for Kids is about great public schools, period. It's the district's responsibility to figure out how to deliver that, right? Clearly, the parents and families, many of them are not satisfied with what whatever their you know their neighborhood option is. And it and the district ought to be doing more to make those choices truly accessible, right? So it's not choice if we don't provide transportation, right? You know, if 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 a parent uh, is working, you know, a job that doesn't allow them to take their job to and from the, the choice or magnet option or whatever. That's not a real choice. Uh, that's not that's not equitable. So, uh, you know, we're we're about the, the having the board evaluate all good options uh, for for public schools and you know and making sure that uh, that they're getting results that we would all want for our own children, right? And obviously, as you know, the Charleston County School Board, as far as the school district that is, has basically created a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. How do you guys endorse this? You know, it's interesting. So, what you would call, I, I think, um, the strategic plan. This is this is where I would actually say the district needs to do better. You know, when I, I remember a few years ago, Vision Twenty Six plan. Right. There, the district had in it. There were some pretty clear goals. And when you spent time in the school district, you could see how are we doing against these goals. Um, I would actually say the average person in our community now has no idea what the district's strategic plan is. Now, I think they rolled out some actions that they might take, mission-critical actions, um, 
But I actually am not positive what you know what the overarching strategy is, what the vision is, what will be true in 2022 or whatever the year is that um, that you or I or anybody could say, did they do it or not? Right. So I actually think that's an important next step in the process here. Um, you know, I think that the district needs to be deliberate in, in any changes that it makes while also operating with a commitment that um, the way it is now obviously isn't working. And so some things have to change and uh, and that needs to be, you know, aligned to a strategy and proven and tested and, you know, with with things that we know are going to work or that we believe are going to work. And, and then the district needs to be really transparent about how we're doing along the way. Uh, this is one thing that we, we hear from a lot of people that, you know, it's hard to understand, uh, you know, all the descriptions about, uh, that educators use to talk about progress. It just needs to be really simple, really accessible. Uh, and so th those are places where I think the district strategic plan, uh, they, they may already have it in, a, in, in that format. I'm just not as familiar with it, so I, I can't endorse it. And I want to go back really to endorsements, and I know I can keep talking about the past. But if you were to endorse one more candidate for the school board, who would that be ideally? In 2018? In this 2018 election? Uh, I don't know. We'd have to get the interview committee back together <laughs> and, 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 and ask again. I don't know. I mean, look, again, we, um, this is the great thing about um, electing people to represent you. You don't have to agree, and so you know uh, the Charleston Coalition for Kids identified the four people that we thought were right for the moment. Okay. We're very clear about that, um, but you know going forward, it, it, it's it's all about how they do in their in their role as board members, um, and you know and and the real opportunity to get better for students. And so um, yeah, it's an interesting question. I, I have not I have not thought about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know out there, but I know you guys spent millions on this campaign uh, as far as the coalition for camp, uh, kids and as far as the school board. <laughs> when you look at 2020, what do you hope will the school district will do next? Um, there are a lot of things that the school district needs to do. Um, and again, I, you know, I'm not focused on the 2020 election. I don't think we should be focused on the 2020 election. I think right now, you know, the question is, uh, what is, I mean, your, your previous question, what's the district strategy? What, how, how does the district intend uh, to make sure that every kid, you know, every student has access to a great public school? That's job one. And, um, you know, and, so, and, and pulling that off is really hard. So I think all, between now and 2020, we all need to, you know, hold the district accountable. Uh, or rally around important moments where you know where the community needs to weigh in, um, and see see what kind of progress we can make. You know, between now and, and twenty twenty, that's a lot. That's a long time away. Um, you know, and I, I, so I'm really optimistic uh, and urgent at the same time. You know, we just we've got to, we've got to focus on on students and, and what they deserve. And you know, obviously, like I said again, you you all spent days on in this particular race. Why school board rates? Well, um, so we didn't we didn't spend millions, by the way. Um, but school board race is the most one of the most important votes that we have. Okay. Um, the future of our uh, of, of our community, the future, I mean, the health of, of of our region depends on you know everybody having a shot at um, you know a life that they want. There are young people growing up in the shadow of Boeing or Volvo that do, are not on track to be ready to fill the jobs that they will need, right? Uh, and by the way, this is not, that that uh, is true, but I, mean, I think only 40% of all eighth graders in Charleston County are proficient in math. So this is, I mean, this is, you know, uh, students growing up in poverty and in low homes. This is white students and black students and, and, you know, students with disabilities and all other things that, are not being served in the way you know in the way that they need, and so um, that that's where our focus has to be. Um, and you know, we will not reach our potential as a society unless public education 
is getting people ready uh, for you know for for the kind of lives that we would all want for our family and people that we love and uh, and so we that is is why the Charleston Coalition for Kids engaged in the school board race. Um, it's why we intend to hold the school board accountable. They've got something. It's one of the most powerful elected positions uh, that there is. And and again, most people have no idea who serves on that board. Josh Bell, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Yeah, of course. Me too. It's a pleasure. Thanks for what you do for our community. Thank you greatly. I appreciate it.